When I was younger, the sound of my voice always seemed to catch me off guard. So I trained my teeth how to become barricade, how to keep words out, how to treat speech like an intruder that would make fool of me in a room filled with people. So I let silence stage a sit-in in my mouth. By age four, my parents did not call it mute. They called it shy, called me a wind of a boy, a breeze that would pick up conversation eventually, that my whispers were loud enough for them to hear, that a keen ear would know the music in my tone. If they listened hard enough, I too could teach their eardrums how to dance. In the second grade, my drama teacher, a megaphone loud woman named my quiet like archeologist, dug deep and diagnosed me with selective mutism, proved that my my fear of talking was social anxiety and not attitude explained that I was so afraid of people that my vocal cords locked themselves in that I was not outlier but pioneer like Maya Angelou who knew quiet like a caged bird it did not sing in the wake of trauma its wings heavy with the weight of grief this is what we call reactive mutism when a painful experience suffocates the throat meanwhile James Earl Jones taught us that everything the light touches is our kingdom. But as a young boy, his inner lion couldn't roar. This is what we call functional mutism, to have a stutter like a broken record. So he vowed never to speak again. What ties the three of us together is not our silence, but our speech how we stumbled upon poetry like refugees. We were the ones who saw obstacles and thought duck, thought flight, thought this can't be the end. The ones who didn't need subtitles because our voices were punctuation marks. This is for my ninth grade teacher who told me that poetry is a daydream that a township kid like me could never afford. That I would have to teach my mouth how to be a white flag to surrender. Like it didn't take me years to sharpen my mouth for battle. Slam poetry taught me how to be a fighter, how to use honesty and sincerity as my greatest weapons, my voice being the only thing in my arsenal, how to use microphone like warrior, how to be defiant with my ambitions, how to speak in the language of dreams, how to sing an audience home like church bells, how to be an asthma pump for everyone who couldn't breathe clear the smoke of struggle. This is how I've used these stages as remedy. Every applaud, an affirmation that my story matters, every snap of the finger, a reminder that I am victory song. Every time I perform, I'm conquering my greatest fears. This is an ode to the poet I became. I still have selective mutism. On most days, my voice has two left feet, cowers in the back of the room, sits cross-legged and dissects social injustices puts all potential conversations on voicemail, treats sound like an unwelcomed visitor. And then on some days, it is able to do something miraculous, something it was never built for. Speak, speak, and speak. Thank you. I want to ask you a question to make sure that the audience understand. When you and I have talked, you've told me that when uh, you were young, as a child, you could not speak at all at school. It was impossible. Mm -hmm. But when you got home with your mom, you could speak. Yeah. Could you describe just a little bit, filling out about selective mutism, just a tiny bit more? Okay. So basically, like selective mutism is when, when a child is like, they're socially anxious to a point where it, like, they are mute when they're, when they're in social spaces. So for example, I'd, I'd be at school and I'd like, my, my teachers, my, my friends that I played with had never heard my voice before. But when I went home, my mother was the only person I spoke to. And she knew me. She's like, oh, yeah, Lee, like, he has like great, like, facial expressions and like talks too much. And my teacher's like, what? What, what, what do you mean? So um, I think like it's, it's, it's something which is like not like highly diagnosed. So some people like misdiagnose it and they don't know what it is. So they call it shy or they think that the child can't speak. But I could speak four languages by age four. So like it was very weird for them to like not have heard my voice before. So yeah. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you.